Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about mediation and how to test mediation through AMOS, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. So before we start uh, kind of jumping into uh, mediation, I want to talk real briefly about just some kind of the fundamental aspects of mediation so we're all on the same page kind of moving forward. So typically um, you're going to see a lot of uh, what we call direct effects you know, that you're testing in a lot of just simple structural models. Those are simply where you've got a, uh, an antecedent that's testing to a dependent variable and, uh, and that's it. That's kind of the direct effect. In testing for mediation, you're in essence trying to kind of understand if there is some kind of third variable that kind of intervenes on the influence, if you will, from that antecedent to the dependent variable. And this will oftentimes be referred to as the indirect effects too. So in my example right here, so you got X going to Y, but maybe X's influence actually goes through a mediator, uh, uh, an intervening variable to uh, the ultimate dependent variable of Y. And one of the other things that you need to um, uh, be mindful of is the terminology that they use for the paths in this. So the kind of the common terminology for the paths with testing mediation is you talk about the A path, the B path, and the C path. So the C path is the direct effect. So in this example that would be from X to X to Y. And the, um, the A path is from the antecedent to the mediator. Uh, and then usually the B path is considered from the mediator to the dependent variable. Uh, so uh, ultimately the indirect effect um, when it actually gets calculated it's very simple is just the A path times the B path so if you're looking um, at your kind of unstandardized regression weights uh, the indirect effect is really nothing more than the A path times the B path and that's the indirect effect and there's different types of mediation too uh, that we need to kind of talk about before we kind of move into testing and aim is one is what's called partial mediation. So this is where the direct effect is significant but also so is the indirect effect or the path that goes through the mediator to the dependent variable. So basically all are uh, significant. And then you've also got full mediation which means that the path from uh, your kind of X to Y is uh, uh, non-significant but the path to the mediator or to the dependent variable the indirect effect is sig uh, significant and they call that full mediation sometimes they call it indirect mediate indirect only mediation uh, but, but with any kind of mediation test you always want to include the direct effect with it so I don't want to test in this instance like X to M and M to Y without the presence of the direct effect of X to Y because we want to see if mediation is present even with the um, uh, the direct effect you know included in that we don't want to kind of piecemeal the analysis and then being looking like well let's just look just the indirect effect and then just the direct effect you really want to kind of look at all of it together and so sometimes even in kind of big models you might have to include the direct effect when you're testing for mediation so let's look at an example of this uh, in Amos and how we test it. Um, and so what I've got here is a um, path model, uh, so a simple path model where I'm using composite variables and I've got a construct called adaptive behavior that's going to customer delight and that delight led to positive word of mouth and there was also another uh, dependent variable down here called tolerance to future failures and also had a, another antecedent which was called uh, service scape which is kind of the built environment around a service lighting seating all that kind of stuff and did that contribute to delight so let's say that we wanted to test and uh, is there an indirect effect from adaptive behavior and this was from a restaurant setting so that did the server adapt their behavior and that did that lead to delight so is there a indirect effect from adaptive behavior through customer delight to kind of positive word of mouth. Let's just start with that one. So this is how we would initially kind of draw the model, but if we're going to test for mediation, well then we need to also include the direct effect in there, uh, direct effect in there as well. So I'm going to include the direct effect from adaptive behavior to 
um, positive word of mouth. So the one thing that we need to do when you're testing for uh, mediation is the most appropriate way to do this is through a bootstrap. And if you're not familiar with this, the bootstrap kind of uh, kind of resamples your data kind of over and over and over again and kind of creates this kind of pseudo population and you can determine how many samples that it kind of creates and ultimately uh, will give you a confidence interval and it says does the indirect effect fall within this you know confidence interval and it's a much better way to assess mediation than just kind of previous versions the way that we used to do this with through like Sobel testing uh, and there's a lot of um, research out there right now that uh, says that Sobel testing is not very uh, appropriate way to test mediation, that bootstrapping is really um, a, an easier way to do so and more appropriate too. Um, so let's jump into Amos. So I included my direct effect, but so now we need to go into our output, our analysis uh, properties specifically, and then go into our output tab. And then at the very top, you'll see a check mark box that says indirect, direct, and total effects. Uh, so this is going to give us the indirect effect. But I also need to click the next tab over that says Bootstrap. So this is where we can uh, ask Amos to give us a bootstrap. So I want to hit check the box that says Perform Bootstrap. Now it'll uh, default to 200. That's way too small. Uh, so I usually uh, use 5,000. Some people will use 10,000. I don't really see a big difference between 5 and 10,000. Uh, the, the, by the time you get to 5,000 samples, your, your estimates are really starting to kind of get uh, pretty specific and not change very much. Uh, in the bias corrected confidence intervals here that we're going to get, I want to change that from 90 to 95 because typically we're looking at 05 uh, kind of significance. So and at this point, we're, uh, we're ready to go. And then, so we've got all of the analysis options that we want to check. So let's go ahead and calculate estimates here. And Amos is going to run for just a little bit because it's got to calculate those um, bootstrap samples. And you can see here we've got output, so it's uh, done now. So in the, the text output, if we just simply go to estimates to start with, um, you're going to see uh, the unstandardized estimates up here at the top. Uh, and so initially when we look at... Um, the paths that we uh, hypothesized. So ADAPT did have a significant relationship to the delight. You can see the T value here is 15. And then delight also had a significant relationship to uh, word of mouth. So that one's significant. But we got here down at the bottom, we can see ADAPT did not have a significant relationship to positive word of mouth. So at this point, partial mediation is, is out because we already know the direct effect is not there, but is the indirect effect present? Um, so let's go uh, further down into the estimates. Uh, and you can see where it says estimates, and then you can go into um, a matrices down here uh, under that, and it will say total effects, direct effects, and then we can get into the indirect effects. Uh, so if you uh, you look here, the way Amos gives you the indirect effects, it kind of gives you the uh, the antecedent and it'll give you the dependent variable. And then it says, well, if it goes through any of those other uh, variables along the way, you know, uh, we'll account for that. But just basically, so what we're looking for in this output is adapt to positive word of mouth. So adapts in kind of our second category here, our second column, excuse me, and the... Uh, word of mouth uh, is at the very last row and so you can see our indirect effect is 0.286. Now if we flip back to our unstandardized estimates here, again our indirect effect is nothing more than taking the unstandardized uh, A path which was adapted to delight and multiplying that times delight times positive word of mouth and that gets us our indirect effects uh, over here. So initially we have our indirect effect, but we do not know, is it significant? Does it fall within the confidence interval? So uh, we're going to uh, go back over here to the left-hand side. When we are in the indirect effects, now it's very important that you're actually uh, 
clicking in indirect effects. If you don't do so, all of these uh, outputs down at the very bottom where it says bootstrap confidence will be kind of grayed out and you can't access them. So you literally have to click on that indirect effects kind of up here and then you can see the bootstrap confidence intervals. So when we click this, it's going to give us the lower bound and the upper bound estimate to determine does it fall does my indirect effect fall within it and is it significant so from adapt to positive or amount the lower bound estimate was 0.193 and the upper bound estimate was 0.396 so with any kind of confidence interval if it doesn't cross over zero um, that's going to be an indication that there is a level of significance there and as you can see in here our significance is greater uh, or less excuse me uh, from a p-value perspective than 0.001 which means it's highly significant and so at that point now we have uh, assessed the uh, the direct effects and we've also assessed the indirect effects and we've got a confidence interval that says it falls within that and it's significant so we have a full mediation um, that is from adapt through delight to positive word of mouth now one of the things that you need to take note of with Amos is, is Amos looks at what they call kind of the total indirect effects here. So when ADAPT went through customer delight to positive word of mouth, all right, so it only had kind of one mediator. And so I'm only testing that because Amos is going to say, I'm going to look at ADAPT to positive word of mouth. And if there's a, an indirect effect in there, I'll look at it. But it kind of looks at it from a total indirect effect perspective. So to kind of put this in perspective, if we were to put another um, uh, mediator in here and included that uh, in this, this process too, well now ADAPT, if we looked at the indirect effects through AMOS and we looked at from ADAPT to positive word of mouth, it would look at the indirect effect through both delight and this kind of secondary mediator variable to word of mouth. Again, it looks like kind of the total indirect effect. And that really doesn't help us. Um, there's never really a time where you want to look at the total indirect effects. You're really more concerned with what is the indirect effect through a specific construct. So I want to see, well, does it, you know, is it mediate through delight, not through delight and another construct to word of mouth. So if you have one mediator um, where it can only go through only one, then the using the indirect effects in the output analysis is really a handy tool and it's quick and it's very convenient. If you have multiple mediators or even possible mediators that's in your model where your antecedent could possibly even go through that IV, through those mediators to the DV, then you have to use kind of a different technique. Uh, and that is uh, called the estimans function in Amos. And that is really more where you're kind of moving away from the kind of the GUI interface and the drop downs and the clicks on this to more kind of doing some of the coding a little bit because you have to tell Amos specifically, no, I don't want you to look at every mediator. I only want you to look at the adapt to delight and then the delight to kind of positive word of mouth, even in the face of multiple mediators. Um, and um, I'm going to. Uh, have a future video that really kind of talks about that because that's a, a little more complicated uh, and it's going to take quite a bit of time to explain that more so than probably this video uh, really needs. Uh, so kind of be on the lookout for that. Um, but this is kind of a, a an overview, if you will, of uh, how to do just kind of simple mediation. And if you're looking for a way to actually present the results as well, here's kind of a template for that. Um, it's always a good idea to put kind of the indirect and also the direct effects and the confidence intervals uh, and the significance that kind of comes through that, you know, from a, a, a kind of a table perspective, you know, you know, your uh, way you write up in your journals may be kind of specifically different on how they want to see it within the text. But if you're looking for kind of a table format, here's a template just to kind of follow if you're looking for something to to kind of base that on. Uh, and if you're looking for more information about mediation, uh, not just simple mediation, but also multiple mediators, serial mediation, moderated mediation, um, uh, I encourage you to check out my book, uh, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. 
Uh, the book's really kind of set up as more kind of a how-to, more so than give, talking of the theory of it, is more the application of give me some step-by-step -step explanation of how to do this. Um, but that's all I've got for right now. Um, if, uh, as it, always, uh, if you saw value, I'd ask you to uh, like and subscribe, and I hope y'all have a great day, good people.